Just Blade Ada. Hey everybody! Well, we got an exciting little show for you tonight with some cool new demos and a great search to top it off. It's time for the Desk of Lady Ada. All that stuff that's happening here at my desk. All right. Well, I uh, today I worked on um, a can bus feather wing, which is pretty cool. We've been adding can bus support to Circuit uh, Python. And uh, I finally got around to saying like, okay, let's actually try it out. Um, CANBUS is a protocol that allows multiple devices to share, I think two or three wires. And it, a little bit like I2C, they can all share those pins. They don't have to have like separate connectors, however, or separate conductors. However, what's cool is they can all share sending and transmitting like dynamically all at once. So it's like a bi-directional um, asynchronous protocol, which is like kind of neat. And uh, it's used a lot in automotive and robotics. Um, and a lot of people who do maker stuff and use our feathers uh, are doing CAN bus stuff. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show it off. Um, so here we have two CAN feather wings and I'm using the SAM E51, which is a lot like the SAM D51 that our feather uses, except this chip has CAN support built in, which is really neat. And you, you do have to have a hardware uh, peripheral that has CAN support. This chip is a little bit more expensive, but it can do CAN. And then um, you can see there's a little transceiver here, that little SOIC, three pins, and then um, this wire connects this feather to the other, and you see messages. When this one is sending a message, it blinks, and when this one receives a message, it blinks, so they're synchronized. And then when I twist this potentiometer, you'll see the message of the potentiometer is being transmitted over CAN bus over to this other feather, which then changes the color of the NeoPixel. So a cool demo, receiving and transmitting messages. So awesome. Okay, so let's go uh, to the computer and I'll just show off a little bit about CAN. So this is the SAMD51 data sheet. And like I said, there's a version of the SAMD51 called the SAMD51. And it has both Ethernet, which I'm not using, and Control Area Network. So it has CAN support. Um, you do have to, it, all it gives you is the TX and RX pins. You'll still need a transceiver. You need something that converts those voltages, which are like, like signaling voltages, um, from RX and TX to the high and low. Because it's like RX and TX are transmit and receive, but it's actually a differential signal. So you need something that converts that to differential signal. And the signaling isn't like exactly zero to three. It's actually like 2.5 plus or minus. It's kind of like an interesting protocol. You can read about it. It's a little bit old. So um, I looked up a transceiver. Now, one thing to watch for is CAN bus is a um, five volt protocol, but the Feather series is a three volt system. So it's like, well, how do you make that work? Well, what you want to do is you want to find a transceiver that has a VIO pin, a voltage uh, level pin for the input, RX and TX, and then a, a separate power pin. The power pin is 5 volts, the signal pin is 3 volts, and that way you get clean um, signal conversion as well as the transceiving. So it's, this transceiver is quite nice. It does both. However, we still have one problem, which is that this VCC pin here needs to have five volts. It needs to have five volts to be compliant with the CAN standard, especially the, the versions used in automobiles. And so we have to generate five volts. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna have to include some sort of DC-DC converter. And that means it's time to go to DigiKey. Oh Before yeah. Before we go to the great search, yeah? um, in, uh, this is from Dustin in Facebook. I think this might be the first time we have ever gotten anything good on Facebook. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks, du Dustin. Dustin has a good question. You're the one. Um, yeah, like normally I'm banning <laughs> Nazis on Facebook. Okay. But um, Dustin um, has a good question. So every yep. year there's a car commercial that flashes their lights to music. And Dustin said that they looked at the ODB setups for volunteer first responders that flash lights to domestic vehicles by sending on off commands through the can. Yeah. Um, could this read a lights on message and then play it back? Um, wanted to do the same type of um, project uh, with a music video, but he ha hasn't been, been able to figure out how to do it. I think so. I mean, the, you know, you'll need to, we'll have to get a library that'll actually read the ODB messages and convert them, but for the low-level signaling, 
this is great and what is this really might be it I this mean might like this, is, this might this is all that's next is taking the music signal yeah turning that into a signal that it can do and this has analog inputs like the potentiometer has analog outputs it has i2s it has midi so you could absolutely do like a midi um, input to CAN bus output and then use that to signal the lights. But I know you're talking about the cars. Yeah, there's a. I worked the, in advertising Gary too. Gary Newman did the cars commercial. Yeah, and like Ever or something. What I remember from a million years ago is it wasn't using you know the, the cars uh, system. There was an outside electric. Well, there was an outside electrician. You know, yeah. special effects person that. Um, changed up how the lights work but um that's a really good project because that'd be kind of neat you know you bring your car somewhere of course you're not driving around doing this and um you uh put in an mp3 and, and it, just, it just and yeah it just it plays just, based on that it just, and and we can decode mp3s um on the feather m4 so yeah i think this would be really handy for any kind of robotics project um power you know systems use this a lot of systems because what's nice is all of the nodes get to reuse the same three pins yeah. And it's very fault tolerant because it has this wide five volt differential signal, and um, some of the ways they do addressing, it's tolerant against many failures. So that's why it's used yeah. a lot in robotics. Um, and just to like, uh, oh, Dustin said, great. Uh, Dustin, get to, uh, pick one up. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just say this. So once in a while, I get some cranks that say like, oh, you know, Facebook's so bad. Why don't you just take Adafruit off Facebook? Well. You know, Google ain't great either, but we're not going to take ourselves off search engines. Instagram, yeah. not fans of that either. Um, I'd rather demand that they do better. We're 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 stuck with them. They're stuck with us, and yeah. so that, that this is why we we just deal with it. Um, but you know, at, let's say there's a hundred bad things that we have to deal with with Facebook. Well, Dustin had a great suggestion and question, and so you know that's what you look for. And that's why we do it. Like, it's possible. Yeah. So the the hate and misinformation on Facebook, we can all work together to change that because it really is um, ruining our society. And um, the leader of Facebook is shutting down the free speech for their own employees. So don't think that they're a free speech advocate. They don't want to hear it. So, anyways, sorry for the tangent, but um, you know, normally I, this is why I saw the question on Facebook because usually I'm deleting. Um, you know, some QAnon or some Proud Boy thing on a live chat. There's a, someone will comment and say, you know, we're the worst. Anyways, so uh, <laughs> let's... Um... Okay. <laughs> you want to go to the computer real fast? I'll just show the, the Python code transmitting really quickly. This is... Um... Yeah, let's go to the computer. And, and then, then we'll do the great search. And then we're going to do the great search. Okay. <laughs> yeah, look, I have to say why. No, it's fine. So. It's cool. I just work here. Um, so... Here is one of the boards, and you can see it's transmitting uh, data. So as I twist it, the data is changing. Oh, that's your console. And I'm just sending a uh, CanIO message at one megabaud. And then on the other serial console, you see it's receiving the data that matches, and it's, that's what's decoding. So I, I think this is great. It was surprisingly easy um, to get going. OK, so as mentioned, <laughs> We need a five volt uh, uh, power source for this CAN transceiver. The Feather, uh, it only really guarantees three volts because if you're running from battery, it might be 3.3, 3.5, 3.7 volts. And it's not always connected to USB. We wanna make sure this can run off of battery power. So we need to have some way to convert our 3.3 volt known voltage power supply to five volts. And that's where we need a DC to converter and that's okay. why it's time to go digikey to the great right. search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DigiKey. All right, it's now time for the great search with DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, okay. for helping us get the word out about all the ways to find things that you need. Lady Ada, take it away. Okay, so this is actually going to be um, part lesson. Um, and part advice. So as I mentioned, I'm doing uh, a CAN bus transceiver and I'm using uh, this chip that will convert our, my three volt RX and TX into differential CAN high and low. But I need to generate some sort of five volt uh, signal, uh, sorry, five volt power supply that I will use to reference the signal. Now, the first thing you do when you're trying to figure out what power supply you're gonna use is if you're going to have to figure out how much current do I have to be able to supply, right? If I'm going to have to supply 3 amps versus 10 milliamps, it's going to totally change 
what I decided on picking. Um, so let's quickly look at um, the schematic. So this is the CAN transceiver. Um, I have the RX and TX lines. This is my five volt power line for the, uh, for the CAN transceiver signal. Three volt for the logic reference for RX and TX. So you'll see here, one thing that's interesting about CAN is it has this 120 ohm um, terminator on one of the pins, uh, sorry, on one node between the high and low um, CAN bus lines. And this is actually like quite a bit of resistance. So we want to make sure that, and that kind of dominates the amount of current that you're going to need. So let's figure out how much current that is. So five volts divided by 120. So, you know, 42 uh, milliamps. Let's double that because you don't want to be too close to the edge because of course you're going to, there might be other resistances, there might be capacitance you have to charge up and down. Let's give it a little bit of a headroom. So let's say 100 milliamps, at least 80, right? I like to double it, at least 80 milliamps. Now, when you're talking about a boost converter and you, you need a fixed voltage and the amount of current you need is very low and it's a kind of like a more of a reference voltage, you might actually want to look at, and especially if it's like close to about twice the voltage input, so 3.3 up to about five, I actually suggest going for a charge pump converter, not a boost converter. A boost converter um, requires an inductor, it can require a uh, diode, um, it just can generate a little bit more EMI. I really like charge pumps, so let's go spec out a charge pump on DigiKey. You can see I've been like Googled what's the CAN bus current draw, and everyone's like, yeah, basically about 100 uh, milliamps. So, um, just get that away. Okay. Get rid of you for a second, or no, no, this is great. He's, he, everything's down. fine. Yeah. So let's search for uh, charge pump. Sounds like a shoe, but it's it's not. It's actually a uh, it's a kind of converter. So you'll see there's actually a lot of voltage regulators, switching controllers, LED drivers. I will say once in a while, look at the LED drivers. You'd be surprised. Sometimes I see a good boost converter in there. Um, there's controllers. Controllers are going to be dif different than um, regulators. Uh, the switching controllers usually need to have some external drive, like a like it drives the MOSFET or something. Um, we want the regulators because the regulators will actually not only do the boosting but also give you that clean output, right? Because the charge pump doubles, but then you need to regulate down to five volts. Okay, so we're here. So as usual, I'm going to click on active. So that gets rid of about half. And then I'm gonna go for normally stocking. And I'm also gonna to go to Rojas compliant. So that means it's, you know, lead free. So it's, I have a lead free process at Adafruit. So that makes sense for me. I want normally stocking because I wanna be able to get more of this. Um, and uh, here I wanna click more filters because I wanna see more options here. I want a fixed output because I want the cheapest, simplest, easiest thing and I want one output only, apply the filters. Um, I want, it says positive or negative, but I definitely don't want negative, so I'm gonna select you know, the positive versions. And then I want surface mount. So I'm kind of doing all the easy ones, right? Get the easy ones out of the way because I've already, you know, you, the number is very scary at first, like 3,000 items, but then you quickly get down to 500. Um, for the output, um, I want a fixed output of five volts. Like sometimes you want, you know, to be able to tweak the voltage around, you want adjustable. In this case, I don't. I really just want five. And you'll note there's a couple of voltages that if you're using these voltages, you'll be able to get a fixed output. Saves you two resistors, saves you two some complexity. You, it's like set it and forget it. So if you're doing 1.8, 2.5, 3, 3.35, 3, 5.5, 5, 12, very common voltages, you can often pick a fixed voltage output. For the current, remember we uh, calculated how much current we need. We, it's going to be at least 40 milliamps, right? Um, when activated, and I said at least 100 would, would cover us. So I'm just gonna scroll and, and get everything, right? I don't want anything under 100, I want 100 milliamps and up. Um, okay, cool. And now we got it. So here's all the charge pumps, so kinda like you know I can do things like packaging. Well, I want it to be small. I don't want SOIC. So you see, I, I click and drag to select everything with eight pins or less. 
And then I option click to get rid of SOIC because SOIC would be like way too big. Um, voltage input. Well, my input's 3.3, so it's good. All of these are valid. Um, the max, all of these are valid. Synchronous rectifier doesn't really affect me. So then um, there's two things I like to do. I like to look at what has the most pieces. So it looks like people really like this LTC 3204, which is a charge pump fixed 150 milliamp output. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit uh, uh, more selective on pricing. Uh, because that's what's important to me. So one thing to make it a little easier to do the price calculation is I select tape and reel. So I only get like the uh, at high quantity pricing because otherwise, again, you'll get tape reel, digi reel, and tape and reel, they'll all come in like three times. You'll basically have like triple the amount of entries. So I've only got 21 options. Um, so the only thing about this is that this is like really kind of expensive, $2. Uh, I want something a lot less. So sorting by price um, upwards, we've got this little option. So this is nice. I'd like uh, you to mouse over to look at the package. Uh, SOT236 is very nice. It's a very simple, uh, easy to pick in place shape. They also have it, a uh, very similar one available in DFN, but uh, it's not stopped right now. So let's check out this one. So one thing that's kind of cool that you'll find out if you use these charge pumps, there's actually like a standard pinout. So we've actually used multiple different charge pumps for um, our NeoPixel drivers over the years. And they're all like pin compatible. So, you know, if one is out of stock, you can actually quickly switch in a different one. So um, checking out the data sheet for this. It's pretty simple. The input is 2.8 to 5 volts. You see the capacitor on the input, capacitor on the output, uh, one small capacitor between two pins to help it do the charge pump, and there's an enable pin. It's like the easiest possible way to get about 100 milliamps out. And so that's what I've done on this design. You can see here, um, this here is the charge pump. This is the capacitor across the two pins. Um, in this case, the part number I'm using is the AP3602, but it's pin compatible. So actually the AP3602 was discontinued. So I'll probably substitute in this MP9361. It's actually one of the nice things about uh, charge pumps. Most boost converters don't have pin to pin compatible versions, but charge pumps do. So this is my winner, the MP9361. I'm gonna pick some of these up and I'm gonna make sure that they work in my design and I'll get this CAN Featherwing, sorry, CAN Feather M4 wrapped up and ready to ship. All right, with that, is a great search for DigiKey. What a great little tune. Yes, all right, so okay. later on this week, we have the new product trick with JP that's on Tuesday. Um, we also have Noah and Pedro 3D Hangouts. That's Wednesday at 11. Show and tell, 7.30, Wednesday night, Ask an Engineer, 8 p.m. So many Thursday, shows. Thursday, JP's Workshop, 4 p.m. Eastern. And then Scott does a deep dive in Circuit Python, usually around 5 p.m. Eastern time um, on Fridays. So that's, that's what's going on this week. I um, know. Please go to adafruit.com. We've been opened and we're operating safe. We've been shipping, so your orders help this type of programming and more, please. Spread the word that we are a USA manufacturing company. Everybody thinks that's a good idea. It's the one thing everybody agrees on. And we have a mass amount of open source hardware published. More is getting published every day. Yeah. Four, 400 different designs, 400 or so. So we're doing that. And then um, we also have some resources for everyone. Adafruit.com slash vote. It is almost election month, which will be then be... Election year. Election... <laughs> When they say season, they don't mean they don't know what they mean. It actually yeah. means like season. It's so going to be check it out. Winter. A few people that saw resources decided to become a poll worker. Um, we're trying to use cool. our our platform just to help do what engineers like, which is have really smart people kicking the tires on things, 
making sure everything's right because nobody wants to deal with any of this anymore. <laughs> so I just wanted to end. Having, uh, ha- having, oh yeah, Scott's going to be on uh, Thursday this week, by the way. Okay. So that's that. But anyways, right. check out adfruit.com slash vote for our resources and more. And uh, if you're in a place where you can be a poll worker, please do because a lot of older folks are staying home because they of COVID. should. So um, help out. Help out. You can meet some cool people. Yeah. Everyone's going to ask. I feel real good. Later on in life, everyone's going to ask, what did you do what in 2020? Did you do? How did you help? And you can say, I volunteered to be a I was worker. one of the helpers. That's all right. you can do. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's escalated this week. Way better than tweeting. Bye, everybody. Bye.